In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most common mistakes that I see people who are learning Fusion do when they're trying to make a comp. And this is it right here. Let's say we want to put something over this shot, maybe some text, and we have some text here. It says, wake up, we're gonna put this over our shot. And so you put the text into a merge, you put your background into the merge, and then you put this into the media out. And where is the text? Why has this happened? It's hooked up right. We have our merge for our background. We have our text coming into the merge, and then we're going to the media out. Where is the text? Is the text there? Yeah, it's there. Why isn't it over this background? My name's Casey. I help content creators make amazing things in Fusion. I also have a free course, the Fusion Survival Guide. It's available now down in the description below. Let's talk about this problem, shall we? Here's the thing. The way this merge is set up looks almost right. And at first glance, you'd be like, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I need to restart my computer. Maybe I'm just having a bad day. But there's one little mistake that is absolutely key to making things in Fusion, and that is the colors of these inputs. This text we want to be in the foreground and we want this sleeping lady to be in the background. And even though we have this laid out in the merge like we would think we'd want to lay it out, right? Where we kind of have our main comp going from left to right and we have our foreground coming in from the top, Fusion doesn't care because what's happening is we have our text connected to our yellow input, which if we mouse over it, says is the background. And we have what should be the background connected to the green input, which is the foreground. With a merge node, the yellow input is always your background. The green input is always your foreground. And so this is a really easy mistake to make because it looks, like I said, almost right. But what we really need to do is disconnect this stuff and connect our background to our background input and our text to our foreground input. And look, now it's doing what it's supposed to do. There we go. It's not as bad as all that. The other thing you can do if you find yourself in this situation is if you select this merge node and hit control T, it will switch the foreground and background because this happens so often, right? Control T switches those colors. Now, if you have a hard time recognizing yellow and green, you can always mouse over these inputs and read which one is the foreground, which one is the background. I'll just hold shift and grab this out for a minute. If you right click and drag off of the output, you can drop this connection on the merge and it'll give you a nice little menu like this. Oh, isn't that nice? And you can pick where you want it to be. So this is gonna be the foreground. I'll take the output of this with my right click, drop it here, and then I'll connect that to the background. So that's a nice way to kind of do that. And then we'll connect this to our media out and it still works, great. The other thing I would kind of get in the habit of doing with a merge node is you just connect the background first. So that's kind of how we got into this situation as we go, all right, we know we wanna merge the text, so we drag this in, and then we're gonna merge it over this, so we drag this in. And that's not that big a deal if you know that that's happening, but by default, the first thing that you connect to a merge is gonna be the background. So you can kind of save yourself a little grief just by connecting your background to your merge first, and then connecting your foreground, then you don't have to worry about it too much. It automatically connects it where it's supposed to be. Another way to sort of avoid this whole kerfuffle is to take the output of your foreground and just drag it over the output of your background like this, and that will automatically make a merge node, and it will automatically connect the foreground to the foreground and the background to the background. And what's cool about this is you don't even have to connect this usually, because if this is gone, we can just take the output of our text one, put it on the output of our merge one, and look at that, it's already doing things. So if things aren't acting the way that they're supposed to, it's probably because you have your foreground and your background switched. It seems really simple, you know, I run into this all the time, especially with people who are new to Fusion, and honestly, I probably do this a couple times a week too, and I go, what is wrong? Why doesn't this show up? Oh, it's because I have stuff switched. The other thing that's really important to remember about the merge node is that the comp size, kind of the, the layer size, is set by the background of the merge. So for instance, let's just take away this text real quick. I have this fake phone screen being added over our footage here, and that works fine. And if we go up here to the upper right, we see this says 1920 by 1080. That's because our original footage is 1920 by 1080. But we have this still image for our phone screen, which is 430 by 430. And we're color correcting it and cropping it, transforming it and corner positioning it to be over that phone screen. So what happens when we switch the merge foreground and background, I'll hit control T, and switch that, things go crazy. This is in our media out, this is our final comp. It's 184 by 326. 
and it just doesn't make any sense why we would do that, right? Well, the reason is because the background for the whole comp, the most background background, which would be this right here, this corner positioner is guess what? 184 by 326. And so it sets the comp size based on that background. This can be a real problem when you have this kind of mismatched resolution. And so you want to be really careful and aware of that. And there are various ways to kind of deal with this and put things on a bigger canvas if you need to. Like, let's say we did need this in the background, but it's 430 by 430. If you wanna learn more about that, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about kind of matting things and putting them in a different comp size. But that's kind of a big deal as well. It's easy to do. There's no shame in making an easy mistake. Speaking of avoiding mistakes, we have a free fusion survival guide. It's a mini video course hosted by me and it's available at groundcontrol.film. There's a link down in the description and uh, there's all kinds of little tips about working in fusion. So if you're just learning fusion, if you're just trying to get into it, I think that'll be really helpful for you. Hey, if you watch this video all the way to the end and you haven't subscribed, what's that about? Huh? What's that about? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I hope that your merges are sorted well and that your backgrounds are in the back and your foregrounds are in the front. It seems like that should be some kind of rap song. It probably is. Feel free to make it, submit it. Maybe we'll make a little music video. Maybe.